Une lecture de l'Évangile de Matthieu. Alors Jésus fut emmené par l'Esprit dans le désert pour être tenté par le diable. Après avoir jeûné quarante jours et quarante nuits, il eut faim. Le tentateur s'étant approché, lui dit, « Si tu es fils de Dieu, ordonne ces pierres que deviennent des pains. » Jésus répondit, « Il est dit, il est écrit, l'homme ne vivra pas de pain seulement, mais de toute parole qui sort de la bouche de Dieu. » Le diable le transporta dans la ville sainte, le plaça sur le haut du temple et lui dit, « Si tu es fils de Dieu, jette-toi en bas, car il est écrit. » Il donnera des ordres à ses anges à, son, à ton sujet, et ils te porteront sur les mains, de peur que ton pied ne heurte contre une pierre. Jésus dit, « Il est aussi écrit, tu ne tenteras point le Seigneur ton Dieu. » Le diable le transporta encore sur une montagne très élevée, le montra tous les royaumes du monde et leur gloire, et lui dit, « Je te donnerai toutes ces choses si, te, te, si tu te prosternes et m'adores. » Jésus lui dit, « Retire-toi, Satan, car il est écrit, tu adoreras le Seigneur ton Dieu et tu le serviras lui seul. » Alors le diable le laissa et voici des anges vint auprès de Jésus et lui servirent. Acclamons la parole de Dieu. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Fatima, for reading Portuguese. Your accent was really good. <laughs> I really could understand everything that you said. For those who are French speakers and have born speaking French, this is how French looks to us, okay? You just get pieces of it. Uh, today we, we, we have been singing this song that our heart has been uh, transformed and that it's like we need a surgery. And if you think about your conversion in that way, that when you surrender yourself to the Lord and when you come to understand that we are, that we are sinners and we need salvation and we need a savior and the only one is Jesus, we give our lives to him, we have like our hearts change it like a surgery has happened in us. If you compare this with a real surgery, sometimes of a heart transplant, that you need a new heart to continue to live. You have that new heart. But one of the things that is needed is that you cannot live the same lifestyle that you had before and that caused your heart not to working. You need to change your diet, you need to change your exercise, your, your way of living. Sometimes you need to take, I, not sometimes, I think that always you need to take some medicine for accepting that new heart of yours. So as Christians, we also need to develop new attitudes, habits, and we need to continue to work towards our new life in Jesus. And today, this gospel that we have just heard now, it is talking about these temptations that Jesus uh, faced during his time here, just before he begins his ministry. And Jesus was tempted by Satan, and that is described in the gospel of Matthew and the others as well. I'd like us to look at that, thinking of how the experience of Jesus has given us this uh, opportunity to learn how to resist these temptations and how we can learn from our Lord Jesus Christ. The temptation is a basic experience that all people encounter. And for his mission of salvation, Jesus stood in the place of the sinful people, suffered the onslaught of temptation, and triumphed by never giving into sin. It's very interesting that uh, oh, these three Gospels, they show about that. And I was curious when I was starting to study how Mark would describe that, because we know that it is the shortest uh, Gospel, uh, only uh, 16 chapters there. And Mark was more or less like, so Jesus went to the desert. He was 
tempted by Satan and he was hungry and uh, he resisted and he was served by angels, period. Not much out of what happened. Thank God Matthew and Luke decided to explain a little bit better what was happening there. But the point of Mark is that he was talking to an audience that he believed that knew already the temptations of Jesus. This temptation, it also mirrors the 40 days that Jesus was there in the desert. It mirrors the 40 years that Israel was wandering in the wilderness. Those 40 years which Israel has failed, in 40 days Jesus has overcome and not seen it. It reminds us of the 40 days and nights that Moses also uh, uh, was in the presence of the Lord. The 40 days of Elijah. And help us to understand that like Adam and Eve, Jesus underwent temptation. But where they seen it, Jesus proved to be faithful. Jesus never seen it never gave into sin, and he is our example and how we should be following his steps. Jesus experienced the temptation to retaliate when sinned against, to withdraw and protect himself, to shrink back from God's mission, and to avoid suffering his empathy and willingness to help those undergoing temptation originate in his personal experience, says RCX Pro, uh, describing and talking about this, uh, this scripture that we are reading and that we are studying. The temptations appeals to common motivations, physical drives, pride, and the desire of possessions, which also, I would say it is connected to the desire of power and to have the influence and the control of things in our own hands. These are mostly the basic temptations that we face in our daily lives. And they come from this kind of three areas that Jesus faced there while he was being tempted. The word in the New Testament describing this temptation of Jesus is this peirazo. It is this test or put to test, tempted and tempted to entice to sin. Jesus was strengthened during that time that he was there and he was hungry and he was alone. And he had been battling for days and nights. And yet, he managed to resist, showing us that we can also, not alone, but with his help, resist our temptations. The first two temptations, they aim to challenge Jesus to prove if he was really the Son of God. The temptation normally starts with, if you are the Son of God, if you are who you claim or who the voice that came from the Father during the baptism, saying, this is my son. If you are his son, do this or do that. Many times in our temptations, we are challenged by what we know that we are. We are challenged that we are no longer or that we are not really a child of God. And also in the temptations uh, of Jesus Satan tried to offer him a shortcut, an easy way to avoid the cross and to receive a kingship. Many times the temptations we face are just shortcomings for what we desire, for what we want, and we don't uh, want to go and wait serving the Lord with faithfulness and waiting for the right time and the right way as the Lord determines for us to achieve whatever we are seeking for. Temptations. Many times they talk about satisfying yourself. If you are the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. Jesus had a need. And he was for a long time without eating. And he had the power to transform those stones 
And he could use his power to that. There was nothing wrong about him doing that with his power because he is the creator of everything. But it was not the intention from his mission and the mission that the Father had given him to use his power to benefit himself or do something for his own pleasure. So it's always a tricky in the temptations. And what does is he is tempted? Nothing less than to doubt of being the son of God, if you are the son of God. Many times Satan, he tempts us with this kind of thinking that God is the one who is always holding us out on something. He's always the kind of guy that doesn't want us to be all happy or have everything that we want. And then he put these limits and these barriers and these things that will keep avoiding us of doing something that we really want. God must not love you enough. If he did you, if he did love you, why would he let you stay in this situation? Why would not he take better care of you? Or how many times we heard that if God loves you, he wants you to be happy and he wants you to enjoy life. But Jesus answered to all these temptations with the word of the Lord saying, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. We depend on the Lord and we set our needs and our desires to be answered and guided by our Lord. Satisfying yourself, it's one of the temptations that we have and that we face. The second one is pride. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and on their hands, they will bury you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. So the temptation here, George Whitfield writing about this, it says that it is some mixed about doing that and being prideful about knowing that as a son of God, he will certainly do that to protect me. He will not allow this kind of thing to happen to me because, after all, I am the Son of God. Satan dares Jesus to prove the faithfulness of God. Since you believe in the Word of God, implies Satan, then why not to prove one of God's promises? How many times you have seen brothers and sisters, people close to us sometimes, that have misunderstood the word of God and have misused the word of God, putting God to test and say, if God really loves me, he's going to do that. If you really loves me, you answer this way or that way. Like if in our prayer, on our way of talking with God, we have the strength or the power to twist God's arms and to make him answer according to our own will. Jesus did not fall for that. Jesus, Jesus did not allow to be manipulated by the devil. To be manipulated to this sort of bribery. Using the word in a twisted way. Because the truth is that this is not the entirely way that the psalm was written. When the devil quoted that, he missed on part that change it and would change everything. And Jesus again answers with the word of God. Again is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. You should not try to put God in a corner when you are dictating the terms and he has to answer according to your will or to your desire. And the last temptation, after trying for twice, trying to make Jesus prove that he was a son of God, he comes with a temptation saying, okay, so then forget about showing me if you are the son of God or not. 
Well, let's say that if you want the kingship, I'll give you. I'll give you anything. I'll give you everything if you just do one thing. If you just go, you bow, just a simple bow, recognizing me and worshiping me. And I'll give you everything. And you will not have to suffer because of that. And he said to him, all these I'll give you if you fell down and worship me. Satan offers Christ an easy way to become king. He's trying to make Jesus not go towards the cross that he knows that is expecting him there. He's trying to make Jesus to get away from that situation, just as he continued to do until the time that Jesus was there being crucified and dying for us, People were passing in front of the cross and shouting things like that. If you are the Son of God, get out from this cross and we will believe you. If you are the Son of God, just get down and we will know that you have this power. Everything Satan is trying and throwing in Jesus, that he may just give up of his mission and find an easy way for that. In our lives, many times we are tempted to try to get shortcuts and to try to do things in our way, in a way that we think it is going to be better for us and not face hardships, suffering, and remaining faithful to God. Jesus is this priest that knows all of our struggles. And when Jesus encouraged us and talked with us in his word about remaining faithful and seeking to run towards him, just as we sang here today again and again and again, it is because he faced everything and he had the full weight of those temptations over him. But he continued to go towards the right direction. And he finally, he finally answers to Satan. Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. You shall worship the Lord. Our adoration, our worship, our hearts, may be set towards the Lord. And we may serve only the Lord. We are studying the book of Judges this time in our small group. And one of the things that we are realizing is that when people of Israel during those times, they were not serving the Lord. They were trying to serve God and the idols. And God has always demanded from his children to worship him exclusively and serve only him. We are called to be children of God and set our hearts entirely to the only one who died on the cross for us. So if we... Think about how to resist the temptations. The lessons we get from Jesus here, some of them we could maybe summarize in this. First, the word of God. And, the, and this word of the spirit, which is the word of God. Ephesians 6, 17. We may answer to the temptations of our lives using and rebuking them with the word of the Lord. Jesus replies to each of Satan's temptations with a reference of the scripture. This word of the spirit, the spirit, it is God's word. And Jesus relies on the scripture for victory and his spiritual struggle. Second, meditating, studying. It is not enough to know the word of God, but we need to know what that really means. 
We have seen over and over how the scripture has been misused, misplaced, and twisted. So people can use in their own advantage and the way that they think it is better because they are reading the Bible with glasses of some kind of desire, ideology, philosophy, and thinking instead of doing the opposite, analyzing everything with the glasses and with the eyes of the Lord. It is the other way around. So how do we do that? We need to study the Word of God. We need to do our best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. We need to study. We need to get to know the word of God. And we need to be together, together in Christ, together with our Lord Jesus, we need to recognize that by our own, we will not be strong enough to face our temptations and to overcome it. We need the Lord Jesus in our lives. We need our fellowship with him. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. It is not because we are strong enough, but it's by his grace. It's not because we have enough strength on our own, but it is by the strength and the power that Jesus gives us so we can go and we can resist and we can continue to fight. We need to understand that we need to be together as a church. James 5.16, it says, pray for one another. We needed the church in order to continue to resist. There is no such a thing as a Christian without a church. Because the church does help us, our brothers and sisters, to continue to be faithful and to continue to fight to serve the Lord our God. Bear one another's burdens. How can we pray together? How can we bear each other's burdens, struggles, Challenges, sorrows, how can we hold each other accountable? How can we be there for each other? This is the church of Christ. We are not better than anyone. We are not better than those who don't, are part of the church. We are just saved by the grace of Jesus, surrounded into his lordship, looking forward to serve each other, and to be here for each other. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. How can we face the temptations of our lives? How can we be sure that we are going to be winning and overcoming each one of them? How can we be sure that uh, there is nothing that is going to make us stumble. We need to trust in Jesus. We need to continue to practice the reading, the meditation, the prayer, the surrend surrendering ourselves to Jesus, and to know that he has overcome, and he is in us, and he will help us overcome. But just as the Apostle John says when he writes to us saying, I write those things to you so you may not sin. But if you sin, remember, you have the one that speaks on your behalf. You have the one who advocates for you before the presence of the Lord. We have a merciful Lord we have this priest, like Hebrews says, that knows very well what we face and how much difficult it is to overcome the temptations. In Hebrews 4, 16, it says, Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace 
that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. That during this period of Lent and the spirit that we work towards getting closer to the Lord and preparing ourselves to celebrate his death and resurrection, that we may be drawn closer into God and that we may come walking towards his grace with confidence going towards the house of God, the place where we will find his assurance and we will find his open arms to strengthen us, to embrace us, and to help us to continue to walk his path. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. And we thank you because you didn't, uh, you didn't spare yourself for being tempted, Jesus. But you, you faced everything for us with the same and even higher intensity that we face. You faced everything, Jesus, and you still overcome it. You gave us the example, and you are our ultimate example in everything. We thank you, Jesus, because you are merciful. And as we have sung and read, and as we pray, Lord Jesus, have mercy on us, we ask you to help us to overcome our temptations. And for any, any one of us that it is facing difficult moments and difficult times in their lives, we pray that we can be together as a church, that we can pray with each other, we can hold each other and help to walk through this path and overcome it. We ask you to transform our hearts. We need this surgery. We need this transformation. We need to be made into your image and to grow into your image, Jesus. We cannot do it by ourselves. That's why we pray and we ask you for your help, for your blessing and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen.